I want to tell you a story, but I want to ask you a question before that. The question is, do you think heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects? Or lighter objects fall faster than heavier objects? They both fall together or something random happens. Make a decision and you might be wondering why this decision? Think about that question, but let's get to the story now. Once upon a time, there was this old man, when he was born, he was not an old man. He was born in 384 BC and then his name is Aristotle. And he looked around at the world and made a claim. He said that everything is made up of five basic elements. And when you remove it from its final resting place, any object, it wants to go back there. It moves because it naturally wants to go to its final resting place. So he said, if you take a stone away from Earth and leave it here, it wants to go back naturally to its resting place, the Earth, from where it came. And if you take something like a feather, that also wants to go down, but not as fast as the stone, because it's not made up of as much earth as the stone. So he believed the heavier something is, the more earth it has, so the more badly it wants to go back down. Heavier objects fall naturally to the ground faster than lighter objects. And how much faster? The heavier they are, the faster they go. That's what he believed. Now, we believe this together as humans for thousands of years after him, because we looked around and our confirmation bias made it so that we looked, oh yeah, feather falls slower than a hammer. A light ball falls fast, slower than a heavy thing. And we believed it. But now you know that the best way to find the truth is to try and disprove something, not just look for examples that already agree with our belief. So if you had a time machine, and if you could go back 2000 years and participate in the story, if you could take a walk with old Aristotle and suggest an experiment to him, you know what, maybe we should try this. To disprove his belief, what would it be? Now, if only we could have taken a time machine and gone back to Aristotle's time and done these experiments, we may have saved humanity like 2,000 years. Because it took us, as human beings, 2,000 years of looking at what we believed and said, oh cool, yeah, this is fine, to actually have someone, Galileo, try to disprove the belief, question the belief that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. And how did he do it? He said, wait, if heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects, then a 10 times heavy ball, like a cannonball, should fall 10 times as fast as like a tiny musket ball. It's kind of like a marble. Think of the cannonball as a bowling ball and a musket ball like it's, it's a tiny marble. So it should fall 10 times or more faster than the marble. But let's see if that's the case. That's the experiment he came up with. And famously, it said that he uh, went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa because that's where he was born. And then he dropped these two things to show that clearly the, the cannonball does not fall 10 times as fast as the musket ball. It actually, they both actually fall almost equally together. And in one single experiment, he disproved what we believe for thousands of years. I also remember reading that uh, he used to literally do this in front of scholars to show them, hey, your books are wrong, and they would still not believe him. So it also shows that humans, even when we are faced with evidence that's against our beliefs, we hold on to it for, for a while longer. And then on top of this, after doing this, after being like almost scolded for this, he made an even more bolder claim. His bold claim was, you know what, this whole business of objects falling to the earth because they want to naturally go there is just not true. Uh, what's really happening is all objects are falling towards the earth at the same rate because the earth is pulling them. It's not because they want to naturally go towards it. And uh, if only there was no air, because he believed the air was the culprit. It was pushing feather up more than it was pushing some other objects. If only there was no air, he claimed that a hammer and a feather dropped would fall together, completely going against the widely held belief at that time. Now, is this true? Did, was Galileo proven right eventually? Uh, the best way to answer this question is to look at the footage uh, of the 1971 Apollo 15 mission, 350 years after Galileo, to show this. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? How about that? Which proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. So yes, Galileo turned out to be right that all objects, independent of their weight, fall towards the Earth 
at the same rate. If there was no air, they would fall together. And the reason we wanted to go into what science itself is in this chapter called motion, and the reason we wanted to start with motion is because in some sense, it's these questions about how objects move that give, give birth to modern science. And Galileo is widely considered to be the father of modern science simply because he said, you know what, if I believe something, I'm going to create an experiment to try and disprove it. And that was the beginning.